Hello everyone, Cat Weasel here, and welcome back to Shadows of Brimstone. Yes, Cade and Running Bear are back. They went down to Mexico, a bit of r, &R but now they're back, and they're back adventuring. Um, but unfortunately, on the way back from Mexico, they've encountered a bit of a problem. They camped for the night, next thing they know, they've woke up, and they're in the middle of some mine. So somebody, Mickey Findom, took them down a mine and just left them down there with all their gear. In all probability they were going to come back, probably do unspeakable things to them. But they haven't returned, whoever their abductors were, and good riddance. Probably something really nasty has happened to them. So both nursing headaches, um, poor old running bear, he's down to nine health, if you remember... Uh, a couple of months ago, uh, last town trip, um, he um, got uh, rid of two corruption. And the first corruption he got rid of, because he had to go to the doctors twice, he actually suffered six wounds. So he's on nine. Um, he's got full sanity, 13. Cade's full health, 18. Full sanity of 17. Cade's also got two grit. Um, he's got all his six shots. Um they both got a whiskey each. They both got a dynamite each. The running bear's got a herb and a bandage, and Kay's got two bandages. They got dark stone bullets last time they were in town, so that'll be plus one damage. And other than that, running bear's still packing his carbine, whereas Cade has the trusty pistol, which is uh, his shots are equal to his agility. And his agility is currently at five because he's got plus one agility with his ribbon. And so that's five shots, which is pretty funky. His initiative's at seven because of the pocket watch. Um, Running Bear's got the ancient coin, which is plus one law. So that puts him up at five. Um, he's got Dead Man's Boots. So anytime he rolls a six for a move, he heals two sanity, which is good. And he's... They've both got tomb chests and they've got three dark stone. Uh, we picked up a bounty which was for night terrors and we've still got the specimen jar that we bought a couple of town visits ago. Um, I don't think you lose it after an adventure. It says nothing, nothing about it. So I think we can keep it as long as possible till we actually get it filled. So that's where Running Bear and Cade are up to. Um, as regards their team stuff they've got $175 and 830 experience points they're both level 3 which means any enemies that they meet from now on will have one elite ability so I'll have to remember that right so escape is the mission so let's have a read Something went terribly wrong after that last mission, and now you're deep in the mines and surrounded. You must find a way out before you are overwhelmed and devoured by the darkness that is chasing you. Set up. This mission starts with the heroes already down in the mines with just a cross path map tile. All heroes start on the cross path and may be placed in any spaces they like. All four exits of the cross path are considered doors. Remove a cross path map card from the mine map deck. Note that the hero posse marker is not moved forward a step on the depth trap for this cross path. I've already took the cross path out. Mission goal. Chased by the darkness, the heroes must find a way out of this forsaken mine before they are devoured in the deep. They must explore the mine until they find the mine entrance map tile to escape through. Special rules. Surrounded by darkness. As you frantically search for a way to escape the darkness, it closes in around you. Anytime the heroes find an exploration token with a clue icon, it moves the hero posse marker one step forward on the depth track. But it also adds an extra threat card to the token. If it is already an attack or an ambush attack, this is an extra threat card for that fight. The additional enemies will ambush as well if that is already an ambush attack. Fantastic. If the exploration token was an encounter, this makes it an attack as well with a single threat card. Wow, this is the first time you don't want clue tokens, uh, icons. Dangerous escape, the objective. 
At the end of any turn in which one or more heroes is standing on the mine entrance map tile as the objective room, roll a special hold back the darkness test. Ignore depth events. If failed, the darkness marker is not moved, but instead there is an epic threat there waiting for you that must be defeated to escape. If the test is successful, the coast is clear and the heroes are able to hightail it, escaping without incident. For us, that'll be a high threat, because there's only two of us. Uh, immediate Dread. For this mission, growing Dread cards are revealed immediately, when drawn, rather than being placed on the stack. But, if we both have a grit, we will still be able to spend a grit each for each character and cancel that card. So, although it says immediately, if we do have a grit each, we can cancel the card immediately. May not flee. Once the adventure begins, the heroes may not flee. They are trapped and must see the mission through till the end. Found Dabby Dozy. Objectives. Find the mine entrance to escape. Any time a new map tile is placed, move the hero posse marker as normal, then roll 2d6. This roll may not be re-rolled. If the roll is equal to or higher than the current position of the hero posse marker on the depth track, the heroes have found the mine entrance. So we're not going to find anything until at least on 12, and then we'd need double sixes. And we start on 16 at the mine entrance. Ignore any get door gate icons on the exploration token for the map tile just placed, if there is an exploration token, as it only has one exit leading to the map entrance map tile as the final objective room. This uses the dangerous escape special rule, which I read out previously. Once the heroes escape after defeating enemy enemies on the last normal map tile placed, and or for the dangerous escape special rule, the mission is successfully completed. Our reward... We each get 100 XP for each character. Failure. If the heroes fail the mission, each hero must discard one gear or artifact card with a listed gold value of at least $200. Ugh. As it is lost in the frantic dash to escape the darkness. Any hero that cannot discard a gear or artifact like this must instead roll once on the injury chart using a D8 instead of an all 2D6. <sighs> so it makes sure it's a nasty one in addition to any in injury you get for being knocked out. So, it's a bit of a toughie to come back with. But, Cade, running bare, the looking good, the feeling fit. They're up for it, baby. Okay. Um, obviously not played the game for two months. Um, may well be a bit rusty. So, I will be uh, counting on uh, you folks out there to point out when I do something wrong which will no doubt happen. So what we'll do is we'll get across to the uh, to the map area and roll to see if we can hold back the darkness. And here we are at the cross path map tile. Uh, as per the instructions, we can place our heroes anywhere. So we'll place them here and we'll go this way. Um, it's just that if we roll a one, it means we can immediately have a look through. But before all that starts, we have to hold back the darkness. And an 11, that's a good start. So we do manage to hold back the darkness, that doesn't go up. So next up, we roll for movement. Initiative goes with Cade, and he rolls a three. And he's going to move here, get him ready, but he's not going to explore. What he is going to do is he's going to scavenge. So he's scavenging the cross tile, and he fails. Next up is Running Bear. And he rolls a five. So he moves there and he is going to explore. So we'll get ourselves the map deck and throw the map deck all over everywhere. I've just sleeved the map deck, which is why it's a bit slippy. But that is not an auspicious start. Right, let's go again. Let's just pretend that didn't happen. Right.
It does make them a bit easier to shuffle. Pity I'm still crap at shuffling. Right. Right. What do we get? We get a switch curve. So I'll just go and get that. And there's the switch curve. So, need the exploration token. There we are. And that's the end of the uh, the turn. So let's flick it over. We get an attack and a clue icon. What this means is we get two attacks. If you remember when we read the, um, the, the mission, it says any clue icon means an extra attack. Fortunately, it's not an ambush attack. So it's just two threat cards. There are two exits, so they stay on. Uh, move the deck track down one, but I've got to move it down again because of the clue icon. So discard switch curve now, and we need to draw ourselves two low threats. Sleeve these as well. I haven't sleeved all the cards, just the ones that I tend to use the most. So, though I dare say I'll get around to sleeving them all eventually. Right, our first one is a P Dice of Stranglers, and the next one is a Peril Dice of Hungry Dead and a Corpse Pile. Right, just bear with me while I set that up. And here are the three monster cards. Uh, I set them up in order of initiative. We've got the Stranglers with four initiative, then the Hungry Dead with one initiative, and then we've got a Corpse Pile with zero initiative because it doesn't move. Um, just a quick run through the abilities. Stranglers Ensnare. Strangler to hit rolls of six. Counts three hits each. Nasty. Hungry Dead. Fear. One. A hero stat in their activation adjacent automatically takes one horror hit. And the corpse pile special abilities are immobile, it doesn't move. Fear one, a hero stat in their activation adjacent automatically takes one horror hit. And it's a spawner. At the end of each fight round, roll a d6. On a four plus, another hungry dead comes out of the pile. Pretty grim. Uh, things to notice are... Uh, Stranglers, no range, melee three plus, uh, combat four dice, they do one damage for each hit, uh, the defense is two and they've got a health of three. Um, they move six and escape six plus. Uh, for the Hungry Dead, their move is two, to escape them is four plus, they've got no range, they've got a melee of four plus, they've got one combat dice, but they do three damage. Defence is four, health is one. It's the defence that's a real problem with Hungry Dead. They're a bit of a pain. And the corpse pile, spawning, is that's, that is the major problem with them. Um, they don't move. The escape's one plus, so that's uh, pretty much automatic. Um, they don't have normal range of melee to hit. They don't have any combat dice. Um, damage is zero. They have a defence of two and the health is six. So it's just really a question of getting in there and getting rid before they spawn a load of hungry dead. But as we're now level three, we've got to roll on the bottom there, which is the elite chart. So let's do it first up for the stranglers. See what their elite ability is. Strangler Elite Ability is 5 Regeneration 2. Heals 2 wounds at the start of each turn. Ugh! God! That is bad. That is real bad. Could have done without that. Well, they are Elite 2. Next up, Hungry Dead. Their elite ability is number four, which is, it's not elite two, it's elite five. Idiot. Elite five. These are elite four. 
which is resilient plus one defense so they've now got a defense of five which makes them even more difficult and the corpse piles and one plus four health brilliant heaping pile more bodies 10 health right right sorted that out now to place the models or I will place them once we know how many there are <laughs> so it's P dice of stranglers six stranglers and four hungry dead and here we are all set up right okie dokie well, first up, it will be Cade with his quick draw ability. So he does this before we hold back the darkness. He gets to make a free attack outside the normal turn sequence, and we could do with it being a good one. He's using his trusty pistol, so he gets five shots because it's the same amount of shots as his agility. If you remember, he's got the ribbon and he's got four agility, so that's one, two, three. Three, four, five. Oh, yes! Four critical hits and a hit. Right. Okay, okay, okay. Well, he's going to hit this guy. This guy. This guy this guy and that guy so I think no in fact he's gonna hit those he's just gonna keep that four in reserve the reason is I don't think he can hit this chap here I don't think he's got like a line of sight really can he hit this one he could probably hit that one actually so yeah, I think he can hit that one. Yeah. So, but he can't hit this guy, he's too far around the corner. Okay, so the first one, critical hit, no defense. He's got a health of three. So we need a three or better. No, sorry, a two. We need a two because uh, he's got dark stone bullets. And he's in my excitement, I have once again chuck the dice everywhere. He gets a two, but he's going to spend a dead eye shot. So his first dead eye shot's gone, and so is this chap. So he goes back, We've killed our first monster. And that is 25 experience points, I do believe. That's 25 for the first monster. Next up is this chap, the nearest. A six. Good night, Vienna. And another 25 experience. Yep, over here. A three, that's good enough. We only needed a two. So another 25. This guy here. Oh, a one. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to spend another dead eye shot. In fact, thinking back, I got a two, didn't I? In the first one so I didn't need to use a dead eye shot because they had dark stone bullets the health was three I got a two so that dark stone bullet that I used before which I didn't have to use and didn't use because it was already dead I'm now using that on this on this one so that's the end of that one and another 25 
we've just got a normal hit against this chap here. So we get, it's got two defense and we get plus one damage. So that's like another two. So we've got to get a four or better. And we get a one, which is rubbish. So we are going to spend another dead eye shot. It's not going to kill it, but it is going to put three wounds on it. Oops, sorry, it's, it is going to, yeah, that will kill it because it's got three health. Oh. Get your adding up right, man. Right, so that's another 25. Whoop. So that's good stuff. There we go. Put that in the communal bin. So that's pretty good. Um, getting those four sixes, we've managed to kill four stranglers. I spent two dead eye shots in order to do that. Um, the first one that I spent a dead eye shot on, though, I didn't have to. I did roll a two. He's got dark stone bullets, so he did kill it. But the um, the other two, I didn't did need to use dark stone bullets for. So I've only got four left. But use them or lose them. So there we go. Got one strangler left. But first, that's the end of the turn. So we do have to roll for holding back the darkness. Five isn't good enough. So that moves on. Now we're into the next turn and it's Cade to go again. So he gets another five dice. But first, he moves. He gets a two. What he's going to do, because he needs to see some of these chaps, one, two, he's going to move there so he can actually see them. And he's going to roll his attack. He gets another six. I may use that on a Hungry Dead because of their absolutely amazing ability now. As far as defence goes, five goes on the Strangler. I've got three fours. Um, bu, 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 bu. I'll see how these two attacks go first. Hokey, cokey, cokey. Do the six first against the Hungry Dead. No defense on this one. So that should be it, shouldn't it? Yeah, no defense. They've only got one health. So don't even have to roll. So that's the Hungry Dead. And that is 20 XP. Oh, we've killed a hungry dead. Next up is the five on the strangler. It's got a defense of two, which is really one because we've got plus one damage on the dark stone bullets. A five, that's enough. Excellent, and that's 25, and that, we've got rid of all the stranglers, and we've got three hits left, so on the young lady here, the red dress, high defence though here, we've got five defence, so essentially we need a six, don't we? So one, even with dark stone bullets, no good. Her again. Need a six. A four. I'm gonna spend another dead eye shot. That'll make it up to a six. She's gone. Um another 20 experience. And the last one, come on, we need a six. A six, yes. He goes. It's another 20. Cade is on fire. Right, um, that's Cade's go. The stranglers are all dead, so they can't go. So next up, it is Running Bear. So he rolls for his movement. He gets a one, which is pants. Um, 
one, but he does get a grit. Alright, he's got a grit. Can he see? One, two, three, four, five, six. Well, you can't see this chap, but you can see the corpse pile. So he's going to use his carbine, which has got a range of eight, so it's well within range, and he's got three shots. He's a four plus. He gets two hits. Right, the corpse pile has a defence of two. So both of these are going into the corpse pile. We anything over a one we'll put damage on because he's got dark stone bullets. So he's got a five, that's four, plus two, that's six damage. If it didn't have its elite ability, it'd be gone. But as it is, it's got it's got six wounds on it. Right. That's that. And now it's the Hungry Dead's turn. So that's going to go one, two. That's it for the Hungry Dead. Corpse Pile gets to roll. Will it spawn a three? I think that's a spawn, is it? Oh no, four plus. So it doesn't spawn either. Hurrah! Right, that's the end of the turn. And next turn, it's Hold Back the Darkness. A six is not good enough. So now we've got to draw a darkness card. Cobblers. And it is Flood of Bats. A black tide of bats pours through the cavern, engulfing heroes and passing by. Each hero takes two horror hits, gains 10 XP, and must then pass a strength 4 plus test or lose one dark stone. Right. Two horror hits each. So K to save needs a four or better. He takes two horror hits because he doesn't save. So he's now down to 15 sanity. And two horror hits for running bear. Also needs four plus. Snake Eyes, he's going to lose two as well. So he's down to 11. And now we've got a roll for a strength four plus test. Strength of Cade is two. Rubbish. Has he got any. No, he's got nothing else that helps him. Oh, I need a four plus. Oh, he does it. Star. And. Running Bear has a strength of two as well. And he passes. So we don't lose any Dark Stone. And that's the end of Flooded Bats. So we can discard that. Right. And now it's Cade to go. First of all, he's going to roll for his movement. It's four. He is actually going to move. He's going to go one, two, three. One, two, three, four, five. Perhaps if he moves two. One, two, three, four, five. That's fine. Just making sure the corpse pile is in range. He gets his five dice for his trusty pistol. And he gets, bloody hell, five fours. Well, they're all hits. Um, I think we're going to start the corpse pile first. Um, it has got a defence of two. A 
two. Mm. Yeah, we'll just say that one missed. Next one. Three. That's another wound. To seven. And another one. Four. That's another two wounds. It's up to nine. Another shot. A two. Urgh. Right, last one. Come on. A four. That's good enough. Corpse pile's gone. So that is. Oh, it's ten plus five each again. So hang on, just while I work that out. Hello, done my calculations, back again. Yes, what happened was Running Bear hit the corpse pile twice and inflicted wounds. So that's 20 XP. Uh, he also did six wounds, which is 30. So that was 50 from um, Running Bear's attacks. Cade's attacks, Cade hit three times. So that's 30 XP. And he did four wounds which is 20 XP. So altogether, that's 100 XP. So, 100 XP through killing the corpse pile. It's a bit of a pain adding it all up, but we got there in the end. Right. Okie dokie dokie. What's that done? Right, that's it for uh, Cade's turn. Next up, it is running bear, so he's gonna roll for movement. A one again, but he does get a grit. So he's now up to two grit, so that's good stuff. And he's got three attacks with his carbine on the hungry dead, and we could do with a critical. We've got a five and a four. So we've got two hits. So they've got five defense, but we've got Dark Stone bullets, so it's four defense. So we need a five or a six off these two. Come on. A six. Goodbye. Woohoo. 20 XP. Real good stuff. Right, both heroes activated, so it's a D3 for catching the old breath. So, Cade gets three. So, he will get back two of his sanity that he lost due to the bats. So he's back up to full health and sanity. Running Bear will take one health back. He was six health down if you re recall because of his uh, corruption operation. So he's in a pretty bad way. We could have done with a better roll. So we got two threat cards. So that means we get two loot cards. Always oh, a silver lining. So two loot cards each, and for Cade, ooh, this should come in handy, gear card, and another one. So he's got two gear cards, which means that probably Running Bear isn't going to get any. He gets, what's this, draw an artifact card, woo! And a sack of gold dust. Well, we've done a very well there. Hang on, just let me uh, discard these low threats. Right, so first first, two gear cards and 40 XP. So I'll put 10 XP back and take 225s. So, and two gear cards. Where's the gear deck? There's the gear deck. And it, what a deck! So 
Right, there we go, quick shuffle. Let's give him a cut. And he gets a crisp rose. Performer or showman only. I think he's a showman. He is. Attached to any item. Anytime you roll the six, you almost you may also recover one grit. Oh yes! Well, he's gonna attach that to his trusty pistol, I think. Every time he rolls a six with his trusty pistol, he'll now get a grip back. And his other gear is... Gain one herb token. Discard this card. And we discard that. Where are the herbs? Here's his herb token. And actually, he's going to give that to Running Bear. He's going to use it immediately. Let me just check what you get for herbs. Discard to heal 2d6 wounds. So he will discard that immediately. And he'll roll 2d6. That's 8. So that'll get him right back up to full health. Excellent. There's now 15 health. Right, let's put those on the loot deck. We want another 40 XP. So again, put 10 back. Draw two 25s. Right. Put the gear deck back now. Right, it's a mine artifact card. Suffice to say, we could do with something good. Here's the Mine Artifacts deck. We've wanted a decent weapon for Running Bear for the past four adventures now. So I think it's about time that we got one. What's he got? The Ring of Tarkal. Plus one cunning. Once per adventure, recover one grit. Right. Cool. He's got plus one cunning now. That takes him up to three cunning. But we could still have done with a weapon. But the grit recovery is nice. Put the artifact back. And a sack of gold dust. $100. Thank you very much. There we go. Right. Well, that was very good loot. I think that's the best loot draw I've had in this game. So, excellent. Right. Well, I think we shall leave it there. Um, I'll just have a quick count up now and then come back and... Um, then we'll uh, just have a quick chat on how the rounds have gone and then it'll be time to say to ta Right, had a bit of a tally up. Well, we ended up there with 285 XP and $100. We also got ourselves um, a very nice Chris Rose that uh, Cade's attached to his trusty pistol. And we got the Ring of Tarkal which um, Running Bear had now got. He's got plus one cunning. And he got $100. And Cade also got some herbs, but um, Running Bear's used them. And he's back up to full health of 15. Unfortunately, his uh, sanity is still at 11, but Cade is fully healed and fully sane. Um, both our heroes got two grit, which is good. And the darkness track is at two. And our depth track is at 14, so we can't start ra um, rolling yet to see if we're anywhere near the entrance. But we haven't done too bad. So I hope you've uh, enjoyed our return back into the mines and um, meeting up again with Running Bear and Cade Gaunt. But I think we'll just leave it there for this episode and we shall carry on next time. 
So I hope you join me for the second episode of Shadows of Brimstone, The Escape. Until then, this is me, Cat Weasel, signing off. Toodaloo.